اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ادعو الى سبیل ربک بالحکمت والمعزت الحسنت وجادلہم باللتی ہی احسن صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسان یفقہ قولی ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز اینڈ لسنرز السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ السمیع العلیم من الشیطان الرجیم حمزہ و نفحہ و نفحہ اعوذ بکلمات اللہ تامہ من کل شیطان و حامت و من کل عین لامہ اعوذ بکلمات اللہ تامہ من شر ما خلق ربی اعوذ بک من حمزات الشیاطین و اعوذ بک ربی ان یحضرون فاللہ خیر حافظ و هو ارحم الراحمین آمین یا رب العالمین حسبی اللہ و نعم الوکیل قدر اللہ و ما شاء افعاله فبی ای آلائی ربکما تکذبان The ayah which I have recited is from Surah An-Nahl chapter 16 verse 125 An-Nahl in English means the bee Allah says in the Quran this is the cornerstone or rock foundation of propagation in Islam. The verse, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika vil hikmati. Invite the people towards Allah, the people of wisdom, the intellectual people with hikmah, meaning with wisdom. Wal mu'izati al hasanati. Then the people who are technical, normal people with beautiful preaching. وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ And then be strong and staunch on those people who are jadala, who wants to fight, who wants to confront, who wants to make trouble. So three types of people, three categories. Number one, the people of wisdom. How would you invite them? Show them the signs, which Allah says in the Quran. Show them, but you have to reason with these people with some knowledge based on wisdom. They will not be persuaded with just generalization or statements. No, you need a different approach because these are the people of wisdom, intellectual. Second people who are soft-hearted people, technical people or non-technical people, You can call them, Allah will change their heart with some few verses because those people are soft-hearted people. And how would you do it? They are mu'izat al-hasana. Just wa'az, just try to propagate them with just softness. But the third category, third category is the, the, those ones who are staunch, rigid, incorrigible, And for those people, you have to apply different approach. Today, the topic is how not to propagate, proselytize, how not to do da'wah. You see, many Muslims nowadays, they want to debate to who? Christians and, non -Christ and other than non-Christians faith, Hinduism, Hindus or Buddhists, etc. But they want to debate, but they do not realize that they are missing the most fundamental principle that never agree on the topics which are non-fundamental. Never. This is the habit of today's Christian missionaries. They want you to go to the side tracks in their own ignorance, in their own shoes, then they want to bash you with their ignorance. And this is what I've been telling to my Muslim brothers and sisters who are new to this field, how not to do da'wah. You must listen this video till end. You see the third category, which Allah has mentioned in chapter 16, verse 125. Today, I'm going to discuss on those people only. The first two people, they are soft people. With wisdom, with good was, with good, with good explanation, they change their hearts. Second, people who do not require any evidence. You tell them, their heart will testify, they believe. 
But the third category or criterion, rather I say, are those that belong to those people who are rigid, puffed up with pride, ingratitude, butakabbir. For those people, you have to apply the same method they have been applying to you. But that method will also be in a civilized way. We don't want to become like those cheap Christian missionaries, these apologetics, the way they attack Quran, the way they attack Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is not our habit. You see, Christian knows. Christian knows the weak point of Muslim, that we will abuse, we will caricature Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with lies, with filthy mouths. They know this. And they also know this, that in return, Muslim will not likely to do that. Why? Because we believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, that he was one or he is one of the mightiest messengers of God. So they take this unfair advantage and attack on Muslims because they know that it is the blasphemy from the Muslim point of view to say any bad thing to Jesus Christ and they take advantage of that. So today I'm going to educate to my Muslim brothers and sisters not to do these silly mistakes. Number one, whenever you meet these jadalas, these arrogant Christians, these blasphemers, what you have to do? Never talk to them on unfundamental, sorry, non-fundamental topics. Never. Second, they have to speak first because they came before us. According to them, Islam is a new religion. So the first thing must be sorted out for, from the second one. This is a common sense. If you cannot sort out Isaac Newtonian era's stuff, it is useless to go Einstein, Einsteinian era. It's nonsense. You have to see all those old theories then to make a new one. What today Christian wants to do, they want to put you in confusion, Muslims, by non-fundamental topics and they do not have their own background or ground under their feet. So what they do? Oscillation. Back and forth, back and forth, like a monkey, like a middle monkey, that's all. I told many times Christians, look, for the sake of an argument, you convince them, uh, one Muslim huh, to be converted. Sooner or later, you have to open your Bible anyways. Why wasting time? Why putting people in conundrum and enigma? Open your own Bible, convince those people, show them that you have better things than Quran. Why Muslim leave gold and go for silver? Why? You see, it doesn't make sense. The first thing must be dealt, then the second one, the latter one. And this is the common sense of the approach of human education and research. But anyways, drowning man clutches at straw, so they do what they want to turn the tables. And again, they utterly fail to do though. Why? Because you see, the truth remains truth always. Seek ye the truth, it shall set you free. Jesus Christ said so. Didn't he? So what things you have in your Bible, in the back of your mind, you know it. Your previous pastors knew it, that these things are not the word of God. The Bible you are carrying in your hands are not the words of God. You know it. But what should you do? What would you do? Those emotions are attached. Ecstasy, euphoria, extrication, all things are hooked up in your souls. So you can't let it go like this. So we have to put a dent. Whenever the Christian talks or try to be clever with the Muslim, Muslims gave him one dent in his head, his philosophy, and it gets shattered down to smithereens. Why? Because you are false. You know in the back of the, your pastors know, the one who's minting money and taking your money and taking unfair advantage of you, you people who are donating them, stop your donation and then see what they will do to you. All the lies. 
self-boasting attitude. You see, I see the people, pastors in Pakistan, they want to, they, 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 they show to the rest of the world that we are the one who want to take Muslims. We are the one. The Western people, innocent people, they don't know Arabic. It's not their language. We are the Eastern Christians, so we are clever enough, you know, to debunk Muslims. Well, in pride and in self, you know. You see, the way sheepishly, the way in a deceitful manner, they try to approach people. You watch them. You watch them, these clowns and monkeys, how they treat people. They make these, you know, hashtags in their programs that common questions from Muslims that where did Jesus claim that he is God? He is the way we should reply them. You see, they're trying to show that we are the one who can answer this. No one can answer this. No one on earth can answer this. Jesus never claimed to be God. Jesus is not God. And Jesus never said that worship me. So why should we worship him? If it's the case, bring us. Don't show with your glamorous attitude of your television, the art and the background and become yourself artisans and then you are the best people who can, you know, proselytize, propagate, Bible thumpers, evangelists. These all kinds of attractive things alluring people does not prove your case. You see, Jesus never claimed that he was God. Jesus never claimed worship me. That is the case you have to accept. You can tell us, yes, we do not have these verses, but this verse we have. But you watch these people, especially from pastors of Pakistan. Neither they speak English properly, nor they speak Urdu properly, nor Arabic. By God, I'm telling you, they're raised in Pakistan, but they do not know how to speak Urdu. They do not know how to utter those, you know, uh, what you call vowels, how to say the word as a vowel point of view, they don't know. They are very bad in diction. They are very bad in intonation. They are very bad in pronunciation. They are very bad in articulation. Watch them, these people. With the pride and but just donation, 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 donation. Every pastor look at his face, his eyes, all are for donation, what Jesus Christ said. Sell everything and follow me. You are not of me or does not take his cross and follow me. Jesus says, sell everything and follow me. A poor man to enter into paradise. The same thing you put this man into the eye of a needle. This camel, sorry, camel into the eye of a needle. This is the example Jesus laid that a rich man to go into paradise. He said, sell everything. Even the foxes have holes and the birds have nests to, you know, live but the son of man has no place to put his head upon. Who said so? Jesus Christ. Sell everything, everything, everything and follow me. The poor person is the first who's going to enter the paradise. But watch these people. How they eat money, mint money. The best business in America is to open the churches and earn droves after droves. Mint money. Like this guy, you know, the pastors name them. Jimmy Swaggart. $100,000 he need, you know, in one, one a day, in one day to put his, you know, head above the waters. Can you believe it? All these part, these old TV evangelists, and now you have new, new faces. Jim Jones, Reverend Jim Jones, what did he do? 911 people committed suicide by cyanide acid. All the, when the money was caught up into the banks, he committed suicide and put all those people into jeopardy. Why you need money? Why? Why? All the people are poor, pastors are rich. Best business by God, I'm telling you, in America is to open a church, your own ministry, and fool those people. On what grounds? Lies after lies. So, number one, my Muslim brother and sister, do not talk on their non-fundamental topics. Make a list and talk on these topics. Number one, is Jesus God? Number two, Trinity. Number three, crucifixion. Fact or hoax. Number four, is Bible the God's word? Number five, original sin. That's it. You can add few subdivisions into these topics. No problem. Do not just leave yourself on these topics. Tell them where did Jesus said I'm God. They will never debate you. 
Ask them, is the Bible God's word? They will not take a chance. Ask them, there's a trinity for proof from the Bible. They will not take a chance. Original sin sources from Jesus Christ, they will not take a chance. Yes, they want to debate on Quranic Arabic. Can you believe these people? Can you believe it? Wallah Azim, you know, I, I don't know. What can I express? When I see these people, they worry about Quran's Arabic. You fools, we have unbroken sequence of Quran coming for 1400 years in the hearts of people. Hearts here, inside our hearts. What can you do? And you worry about us. You people know that how many Bibles were there and you just canonized them. You know that, that there is a difference between, you know, books between Roman Catholics and Protestants. Six, seven more differences between or each of them. 166 books, 172 or 73 books. How dare you people talk to us that what's your original Arabic? We have Arabic. We are not the slave of translation. We have the original, the Arabic which was left over by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Unbroken coming. There's no other book on the surface of the earth. You know that? Which is recited by hearts. And you people, you don't even have the common source. 5,000 manuscripts you are boasting about a New Testament in London Museum. No two are identical. 20 or 10,000, more than 5,000 or whatever, 20,000 manuscripts you are boasting about Old Testament in the museum. No two are identical. Then how would you know that which was from God, which was not? Through churches. Churches decided that this is from God, this is not from God. Jesus never endorsed them. Did Jesus endorse all these kind of documents? No. That is why you have Matthew, you know, a book of Matthew according to Matthew. According to Mark. Why according? Because you know that these books are not endorsed by these particular names. Assumptions. Conveniently, you take their names to show the citings. You know, in citing in English subjects, we do citing for students. They have to cite where they took this, uh, you know, article. Otherwise, they will, they will be charged for plagiarism. And they do it. Can you believe it? The Bible has been plagiarized. They have been endorsed without any names. And you brought up the religion and you talk on us. Judge ye not that ye not be judged under what judgment you are judging others. Ye hypocrites. Why see the smug in your brother's eye? First remove the beam from your own eyes. Then see the sliver in your brother's eye. Hebrews chapter 7 verse number 1. A good hammer, a sledgehammer from Jesus Christ to you people. Worrying about other people. Worrying about things. Swelling the whole camel. But worry about the gnat. What do you have? What do you have? You're Arabic. You're Arabic. You, you have your Bible in Greek. Jesus never spoke Greek. Jesus belonged to Eastern. You people got Western culture into the Bible and you laugh on Arabic of Quran. You're trying to tell us that in Arabic of the Quran, this should not be there. This should be there. We are learning from you. We have unbroken secret. The highest tafasir explanation of the Quran is no other book on earth has it other than Quran. You know that? Tafsir explanation of the book from unbroken secrets of science of Hadith the one whom the book has been revealed to, Messenger Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he dictated those translations from Sahaba. Not translation, tafsir, explanation, what he meant when the verse was revealed. You know that? We have every data. And Jesus said so. He will guide you into the all truth. I will end this. What do you have in the case? One verse is there. Church wants to make his own interpretation. Jehovah Witness has his own interpretation. Then Seventh-day Adventist has his own interpretation. Orthodox Jews of the Old Testament, they have their own interpretation. You know, Septuagint, al access it has their own interpretation. Who has to be, have to follow? Who? This is the point. You do not have a rock foundation to propagate and you're trying to show us eyes. We have the rock foundation. Hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Allah says in the Quran, chapter 16, the same chapter I read before, recited. In chapter 16, Surah An-Nahl, chapter 4, 16, verse 44. Allah says, O oh Muhammad, peace be upon him, we have revealed this book to you. And it is your job to articulate, to explain to the rest of the world. Whatever revealed to Jesus for the sake of acceptance, did he explain who wrote it, who got it? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. 
Mark wrote, Jesus went to that place, preached gospel. Uh, then John said, Jesus went to that mountain, preached gospel. Matthew said, Jesus went to that place and preached gospel. Which gospel Jesus was preaching when Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were not written? Which? Paul says, if Christ is not risen from the dead, our preaching is vain. Our religion is vain according to the scriptures. Which scriptures Paul is talking about when Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were not written? Think. You people got all those crucifixion from New Testament and hints from the Old Testament. But what this uh, Paul is talking about? You see that? You have loopholes. You have holes in your documents. Can't you see? Your bona fide is not correct. I'm ending this. Jesus Christ said. He said that. Verily, verily, I say unto you. That you people will see that the one who is coming after me. Eight, you know, masculine pronouns he used it. Eight. When the spirit of truth will come, he will guide you into all truth. You cannot bear this now. What message? The message of this. He's telling to disciples, you can't bear it. But listen, when he, the spirit of truth will come, he will guide you all into the all truth. He will guide. He shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall tell you many new things to come and he shall glorify me. Who glorified Jesus before Muhammad, peace be upon him? Tell me who glorified Jesus other than Islam. Who was the person who claimed that I listen, I speak? Hold the Quran is revealed as a schemata is Qul, say O Muhammad. And he says, you people don't believe in dictation, in verbal dictation. You said the Holy Spirit inspired people to write. But Jesus said, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall tell you many new things to come. What new thing Jesus didn't give you for 2020 years, which, you know, the Holy Spirit you claimed gave you. What things, new things he gave you? Nothing. And he will glorify me. Who glorified any non-Christian faith other than Islam? Who? This is Quran which says, Vajihan fi dunya wal akhira, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter. Who? For Jesus and his mother. Can't you see all these things? So Jesus Christ said that. Verily, verily, there are many things I have to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of Truth, will come, he will guide you into the whole truth. He shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he shall tell you many new things to come and he shall glorify me. No one can fit here except Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. If not, come and stand and debate and stand to reason.